Darkness is a core part of our psyches as human beings. It started when we were children and we couldn't see when we went to bed at night. And the fear of darkness has two components that we had as children. One was that in the absence of light, there was the unknown. And then the second was when we couldn't see what was around in our room, our minds could project all of our fears inside to make monsters that were scary. When we grew older, our darkness changed beyond the physical to cover situations like loss of a loved one, loss of purpose in our life, looking around at world events and feeling despair. It has the same two components, the unknown for the outcome and that whatever that outcome might be could be threatening to us. An insight that Jewish tradition brings on how to deal with that darkness is the awareness that God is present in the darkness. In Isaiah 45, 7, God says, I form light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. Or in Psalm 139, even the darkness is not dark to you, God. The night is as the day, the darkness as the light. Which means that from the perspective of God, there is no darkness. There is only light. And it's human beings through our perception and through our actions that are responsible for that experience of darkness. So how do we be with darkness in our lives? How, in a way that allows us to move forward with faith and presence. And one is to be able to be present with our experience without judgment. When I camp and it's nighttime, I purposely don't use a flashlight as I move from one place to another. I instead let my eyes adjust, put my attention in my feet so that I don't step over anything, start to really listen and use all my senses that I let it be okay that I can't see directly what's in front of me because all my other senses are helping me move forward. We can do that same thing when we're experiencing painful things. Can we be present with the sensation of the pain without saying that it has to lead to a certain outcome? The second thing is that in the midst of darkness, we take responsibility for bringing the light. We say that we are not going to be consumed, but instead going to actively focus on the light in our life. When we lose a loved one, we have a shiva period of seven days where we f allow the light from our relationships to support us. We give tzedakah, charity, in the name of our loved one. We bring light in the middle of darkness. When there's divorce, we lose a significant relationship. We focus on the light in our own being, the goodness of what we have to give, and we rely on the light in the relationships that, and friendships we're already connected with. And when we experience difficult world events around us, we speak up, we take action, we bring light to our lives and to the world. Now, choosing light is a commitment. It's something that we have to decide with every bit of our being or else the darkness will consume us. Rami and Nurit Elchanan and Bassam and Salwa Aramin were Israeli and Palestinian parents who both lost children in terror and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. They experienced some of the worst darkness that people can experience losing a child and losing a child through murder where the sense of vengeance and anger is so present. And instead of acting on that anger and vengeance, they chose to join a group called the Parent Circle, a group of bereaved Israeli and Palestinian parents who came together to share their stories and their common humanity and actively work to try to bring solutions and dialogue among Israeli and Palestinians. They made a choice in the midst of their darkness 
to choose the light. To where Rami Elhanan, the Israeli father, said he had never even met a Palestinian person up close before this incident. They chose light. So when we are in darkness, when we don't know the outcome of what's going to happen, we have the choice to embrace God's presence in the moment, to say that there is light here. And through doing that, we can discover that God has been with us all along.